G'day folks, John in Thailand. I, uh, I'm just down near the dam. I was being very quiet and walking very carefully. I just wanted to see how many uh, bubbles were in the surface of the dam. Uh, the reason why I was quiet and I didn't go right over to the edge is fish can see shadows and it frightens the hell out of them so they'll buzz off and you know I probably wouldn't be able to count any bubbles and uh, I think they can feel vibration so if you're walking heavy or you know driving a vehicle near a dam you know they would know plus there's snakes um, I'm not going to get into the, the thicker grass here I did see a snake in a dam last week. Uh, we're pretty lucky, we've got water, plenty of it. Some people around here, their dam's barely got enough water in it to you know, have a bath in. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's cool. Uh, that's the National Park over there. To my right is Pechabun, about half a kilometre away from the border uh, between the two provinces. And uh, that goes for about 30 kilometres into Pechabun, hell of a range of hills. And it goes over to the north, which is that's north over there. Uh, it's about 70 kilometres that way. It goes northwest up that way to uh, near Peach and Rose City. Uh, there's a place called Wang Plong, I think, or Wang Pong got to be careful because there's a Wang Bong just down the road in Pechabun and we've got a Wang Plong here and you know like <laughs> they all sound pretty much the same when you first hear them uh, but it, but it's whatever the little village is up there where the where the National Park ends it's like about 15 kilometers from Peach and Rose City uh, hell, of a, hell of a national park uh, we've got our own little park here which has got bamboo tick planted that last year it's uh, it's coming along nicely we've uh, cut some out of that cut some out of that but not that so that one looks a bit mm, undernourished and I'm just looking at this tree behind me I don't think it's moringa we want to grow moringa trees up at the uh, up at the other orchard on some land up there we've got. Uh, I'll have to double check that. I can't see any pods, so maybe it's not. There are a few trees with similarities here. But mango trees are pretty prevalent. <laughs> so that's what we, uh, we have in the orchard. That one's new this year. That one's a one-year-old tree. And that one there is about two years old, maybe two and a half. I don't keep accurate records of uh, when we plant them. Tick might, but I don't. Uh, the weather's the weather's supposed to be stormy. Uh, um, there's a, I think it was a typhoon. They said uh, in the South China Sea, and it was going to make landfall in Vietnam last night and across into Laos, which is less than three hours drive away from here. So, yeah, maybe this is a calm before the storm. But after I've been up to the other orchard and pruned some, pruned some mango trees and uh, put some stakes in, I might have to come back after morning tea and go down these lanes and start cutting them. They're getting a bit crazy, the weeds. We've tried to uh, minimise our use of poison to poison the weeds to area under the trees. Um, that's sort of like on a little berm there. And the same as this one here, it's on a berm. So it's not exactly representative. I've been up and down and used poison on this side and I got to, must be here, and then the pump played up, so I didn't get that little section done down there. But I did get the other side done, so I did on the other side. But I think we're just, you know, we'd like to go all fully organic, but not that easy, to be honest. And it's going to cost a lot more money, and we've got to see a better return on our mangoes. 
if we're going to be organic. But anyway, that's my day. Well, start of it, it's only 6.50, so I'll be going for a while. I'll, uh, I'll leave you now, and I hope everyone has a good day. Bye-bye.